Hey, blessings, Jason here. Good afternoon to you. I just want to take a few minutes of your time today. To, oh, why is that thing in my face like that? Hey guys, blessings, thanks for checking out this video. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Uh, please uh, hit the notification button if you'd like to be notified of when we have new content available. And please feel free to share um, to wherever, wherever you are led to, to, to share it. Uh, so as I said, the thing I wanted to talk to do you today was the differences between a believer in Jesus and a disciple of Jesus. And there are two very different things. And we can f often fall into into one of the categories and we're going to look at uh, the differences in them and how we line up to the word of god and how we line up to the whether we are a believer or a disciple of christ first of all let's look at james so james 2 19 says you believe that god is one you do well even the demons believe and shudder so we can see here in scripture that we don't necessarily have to be a follower of Jesus in order to believe in Jesus. Just like anything today, we often have belief in lots of things, but we don't follow them. So let's look at the word disciple. So the disciple word in Greek actually comes from a word called matitos. And what matitos means, it means more than a student or more than a learner. So a disciple is an avid follower, someone that completely um, adheres to the teachings of someone else. And we make this the rule of our life and the rule of our conduct and the actions and everything we do in the walk of our life. Now, one of the things the Pharisees did, they prided themselves in being disciples of Moses. In John 2, 28, it says, and they reviled him, saying, you are disciple, but we are a disciple of Moses. But Jesus followers, us that are in Jesus, are called disciples and our discipleship began with the call of Jesus and we see that in the 12 uh, the disciples that Jesus called everyone towards him Jesus was very explicit about the cost of following him discipleship requires a totally committed life on behalf of us Luke 14 verse 33 says any of you who does not give up everything he cannot be my disciple and the second thing is sacrifice is expected so Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew verse six, chapter 16, 24, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. See, it does say in John 6, 66, From this time many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. But you see, not everyone that was called to be a follower ended up following Jesus. Some of them found it too difficult. They couldn't give up their own lifestyle. They couldn't give up their financials. They just literally were so drawn into the world, they weren't willing to surrender everything to him to follow him and uh, to be a disciple of Christ. So let's look, So biblically speaking, you could say that a Christian is someone who has placed his complete and total trust in Jesus Christ and follows the teachings of him regardless. So believe it or not, Jesus never actually used the word Christian in his teachings. It actually appeared for the first time in the book of Acts. And before that and throughout the Bible, you'll see that Christians are referred to as a lot of things and three of the things, and I'm going to leave the actual passages down in the comments below where you can go. So Jesus, they're actually described as disciples, saints, and they're often called brothers in scripture that you will see. So as I said, I said, I will leave that information down below in the comments below. So Christian actually means belonging to Christ. And the only other times it's referred to as Christians in the Bible is in the book of Acts, chapter 26, verse 28, and 1 Peter 4, 16. Jesus actually chose to use dedicated followers to carry his message throughout Jerusalem, throughout Judea, throughout Samaria and off into the rest of the world and this is actually Jesus does give as a commandment in Matthew uh, chapter 8 from verse 18 before his ascension to heaven Jesus says all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you to the very end of age. So here we see that making of disciples is extremely and very important because it's the Lord's chosen method of being able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So guys, is being a disciple important? Is it important to be a disciple of Jesus? So a true Christian is someone that not only believes in Jesus, but that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit through the new birth in Jesus Christ. And we're also an avid disciple, a follower of Christ. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So a disciple is someone that completely follows the teachings of Christ, would have counted the cost of following Christ, is we would make Christ our number one priority in our lives, and we are actively involved in making other disciples. So as a Christian, there's three important things that we need to understand as being a Christian. And the first one being this, is that we need to have faith in Jesus Christ. And John says in verse chapter 1, verse 12, But those who embraced him and took hold of his name were given the authority to become the children of God. It says that when we have faith in Jesus Christ, we are given the authority to become and welcomed into the kingdom of God. So that is the first one, we need to have faith. Second thing is we need to be born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in John chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Jesus answered, Nicodemus, listen to the eternal truth before a person can perceive God's kingdom realm. They must first experience a rebirth. And this is our baptism of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. So Jesus can come. So basically we give everything that we are and we surrender. We've counted the cost. So at that point, we become a new creation in Jesus Christ, indwelled and empowered and activated by the Holy Spirit living within us. And then the third thing is that we are being transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 18, We can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our faces, and with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of Jesus. We are being transformed into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to the other. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So he's saying that the Spirit now that comes to live in us, we are created as a new creature. The old has passed away. The veil is torn. We no longer need to go to a priest. Jesus is our high priest. When they used to have the tabernacle where they used to have the veil and the inner court and the outer court, it was only the high priest who could step in to give an offering. But Jesus came and tore that veil so that now we have access to God through Jesus Christ without any middleman. So now we understand that we are Christians through Jesus Christ. We have been transformed and transforming into the image of Christ. So that is the three things you need to understand is we need to have faith in Jesus Christ. We need to be born again by the Spirit and we need to be transformed into the image of Jesus. The third thing I want to talk to you about is let's look at the characteristics of being a disciple. So there's four parts here. The first one being we need to have assurance of our salvation. In John chapter 3 verse 16 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So that's we need to understand that we have salvation through Jesus Christ. We have assurance of our eternal life with him. Then the second thing is that we are activated by the Holy Spirit that lives within in us. John chapter 14 verse 26 to 27 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring, you, bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The third thing is that we need to be growing in grace of our Lord. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18 says, But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. So we need to be growing in the Word of God. We need to be 
listening to the word of God. We need to be actively involved and take an action on the word of God. And then the fourth thing is someone that shares in the burdens of Christ for the lost souls of men and women. Matthew chapter 9 from verse 37 says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. So that is the four things. So firstly, we need to have assurance of our salvation. We are activated by the Holy Spirit. We grow in knowledge and wisdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we share in the burdens of Christ. So guys, the last thing I wanted to talk to you today is to show you a little bit of the differences between a believer and a disciple of Jesus. And you can weigh up for yourself which side you're on. Here we have, so a believer believes in Jesus. A disciple follows his commands. A believer goes to church on holidays. A disciple knows that church community, is fellowship is powered in to their faith. A believer reads their Bible when things get tough. A disciple reads their Bible regularly. A believer prays when things get tough. A disciple gives thanks no matter the circumstances. A believer will twist the Bible to fit his or her lifestyle. But a disciple works to make his or her lifestyle resemble the teachings of the Bible. A believer will sacrifice when it's convenient, but a disciple will sacrifice no matter the potential outcome. A believer gives tithes when there is no risk. A disciple gives tithes no matter the risk. A believer conforms under the pressure of culture, but a disciple holds fast against temptation. A believer shares their faith when it is comfortable, but a disciple will share his or her faith regardless of the scenario. And lastly, a believer knows about Jesus, but a disciple knows Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. So guys, thank you very much for checking out our video today. Please feel free to share this message with someone that you feel may need to know it. Um, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, guys. And if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them below. And guys, we will talk to you next time. Have a blessed day and week. God bless you. Bye-bye.